Our next speaker is Dr. Mohamed Babet, who will be speaking on emotional and mental health supports for refugees. And um, <clears throat> Dr. Babet is the founder and executive director of the Muslim Resource Center for Social Support and Integration in Canada. He's conducted research on families and youth at risk for over 30 years. And today we'll be able to gain a little bit from his experience. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me today. I'm very delighted to be here in this very important event. Uh, so sharing some of the experience of the Muslim Resource Center to, uh, on, uh, so social for social support and integration, working with uh, refugees and newcomers uh, in London, Ontario. I'm also really delighted to, uh, you know, uh, uh, mention here our long-standing uh, 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 collaboration with, uh, the, with CCLC uh, and really throughout the collaboration that we have been uh, demonstrating for the last few years, we have been able to really help many newcomers with uh, positive outcomes in terms of, uh, you know, preventing violence and escalation of violence in their families. So uh, today, I, so the focus of my, pres my, my presentation is, first of all, I would like to share with you the new model of family violence response that was uh, developed by the Muslim Resource Center and has been implemented, uh, you know, addressing family violence within uh, the context of migration and uh, uh, pre-migration in particular. So the second point is really trying to share with you how this model actually works uh, in our practice with Syrian families and also give you some, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, information about next steps or where we want to go from here. So the Muslim Resource Center for Social Support and Integration's vision is really about building healthy communities and healthy families. Uh, so we have, we, we try, for example, to do that through the, the program that we have established to be able to identify risk factors of family violence as early as possible, and accordingly to develop and implement early intervention programs. So today, so the main question that maybe, uh, that I'm trying to discuss with you is, how can we best balance safety of women and children while recognizing and respecting their core values? Uh, that's a big question, very complex, but I think, uh, working with families coming from collectivist background, from conflict zones, without understanding the cultural context, it's difficult to support women and children who could be at risk of violence, or maybe those who could be uh, victims of family violence. Uh, so I will share with you some of the work that we have been trying to do. First, I want to uh, just mention to you what the new program called or what, what's the, the new model that we are uh, using at MRC called, and that's really an, an innovative family violence community coordinated response. We call it culturally integrated family safety response. We always like long names, but the <laughs> and it's CIFSER. So what is CIFSER? What, what's the culturally integrated family safety response? It's really, first of all, it's a strengths-based approach uh, focusing more on identifying risk, of fac risk factors of family violence as early as possible. At the same time, really about bringing all the key parties, the groups, to work together towards common solution. Uh, so historically, many uh, groups who are involved with domestic violence, they don't work together. I think, you know, it's about time that we find ways to bring the key uh, groups, including those who, those who represent perpetrators, or maybe potential uh, individuals who could maybe represent threat to, the, to, to, to uh, you know, vulnerable individuals like women and children. So we need to bring them together. So the, the uniqueness of this program is trying to combine two things, community coordination, as well as cultural context. And that's really what's missing in many of the work that we have been doing within our traditional mainstream uh, responses to family violence. So I will explain to you how the 
the culturally integrated family safety response works. So it works actually in three levels. Uh, first of all, we consider violence as a continuum. If you, oh, sorry. So if you, if you look at the, so we, first of all, we understand violence as a continuum. It doesn't just come here, become really something very severe. It's escalated for many different reasons. So when we consider violence as a continuum, also we think it's important to consider the responses as continuum. You know, if someone, if someone for example, uh, you know, perpetuate violence, you can't just maybe punish him or her with something severe. So you have really to understand where are this, where is this violence in the continuation, in the continuum of violence. So this is why, for example, we think the culturally integrated family safety response starts with prevention informal kind of engagement, building awareness in the community, help service providers better understand the cultural context of family dynamic within newcomer families. Uh, so that's really mainly on the community level. If you see, there are three, three levels. The first is really prevention. Prevention is really starts with awareness and capacity building. And then the second level is really early identification and early intervention, which really means start maybe with, you know, consultation, advocacy, uh, some counseling, support and safety planning, home visits. So those are really the key activities that we will be, uh, that we would really use when we work on the, on the second level. And that's really the focus of the Muslim Resource Center's work. Really, we try to uh, use most of our resources to make sure that we would be able to identify risk factors as early as possible. So the third level is really when it happens, the critical intervention. In this, in this situation, usually the situation is already here, and then that will become a case of a mandate service like the police, children and society. So even though, for example, the police or any other mandated service are working on the case, and there is imminent risk, maybe the, 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 the perpetrator will be charged. So we still work with them to maybe at least, you know, to reduce the amount of time that the criminal justice system will be involved with this family, to really reduce the, the, the the, the, the tension that could maybe be, be between the family and the justice system or maybe other mandated services. So MRC's role is really crucial in all the different levels. And we have been really seeing a very impressive kind of outcome, not just really supporting clients, women, children, families, men, but also increasing the collaboration between those who traditionally, for example, would not come and talk together, like for example, the imams and the shelters, CAS and all other organizations. So that is in, 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 uh, in uh, briefly uh, to describe how the, the, the CIFSAR works. Now, our, now we want to, to, I want to show you how this program or this model works for the Syrian refugees. Uh, so uh, the main purpose of, of this work is really to prevent family violence through community outreach and engagement strat uh, strategies and through early identification and early uh, intervention when we identify risk factors. I just want to mention here, uh, this work actually started, I would say maybe five years ago, in a, in a, new, project, in a, in a new project called Safe Integration Project. And that is really one of the uh, programs that we are really very proud to say initiated with CCLC. For the last five years, we have been working on this program with the uh, Iraqi refugees, with the uh, Afghani refugees, and the outcome has been really, uh, you know, uh, very, very positive. So we, we, the learning that we have get from this project integrated within the culturally integrated family safety response. Now, if you look at the, the work that we have been doing with the Syrian refugees, I have here some numbers. Yeah. So, uh, so we have been, since December, we have been, you know, uh, engaged with about 250 individuals from the Syrian community. So the activities were education, presentation, uh, community events, group sessions, and home visits. So as I said, all this really as part of the prevention. We don't go there, uh, we are assuming that people have problems. We go there, you know, to engage in an informal uh, relationship, building relationships. But also at the same time, we want really to be aware if there is any warning signs that maybe we can be helpful in the early stage before things escalate. Uh, what's this? So that's just really uh, the, 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 Syrian, the, the refugees in general. 
as you see, maybe 44 of them Syrian refugees. So those 44 families who are being involved already with our services and receiving services. Uh, so those are really the, I don't see, so most, th th those are really the, the presented problems within this 44. You see we have family violence, mental health issues really big, uh, legal issues, family conflicts, including parent-child conflict, behavioral issues coming a lot from schools, reporting about, you know, uh, children really behaving in a, in a way that would be, put them in trouble with, uh, with the school system. As you know, there is zero tolerance or violence, but uh, uh, isolation others. So if you look at the resources, the, the sources, the, sorry, the, uh, I can't see from here, the uh, resource or the, the source referral, source of, of referral. It, it's very interesting to see, no, sorry, that's presenting problems, yeah? That's presenting problems. Sorry about that. Yes, that is the source of referral. You can see, for example, when we talk about collaboration, you see, for example, CCLC, 23% almost of the, over 23% of the referrals come from CCLC. 18% and over come from our community outreach. Just recently, we have been able to double our, uh, you know, employees, so then we, we, we received money. We hired what we call uh, safe, uh, safe integration facilitators, those who will be really going out to the community and really trying to build relationship, but also at the same time identify risk, risk fac factors. Self-referral, 23%. Mosque and church, 9%. And then you see you, we have uh, community member also referring to us and family doctors. We work a lot with uh, Dr. Ma Natalie and uh, Diana. So uh, as you see, that, that shows really uh, the kind of relationship and uh, collaboration that we have in order to really be able to identify risk factors as early as possible and then provide them with the services that they need. Uh, I just want to uh, mention one thing here at the beginning. We saw the, the mental health issues really, uh, you know, uh, maybe about, uh, I mean, most cases are mental health. Uh, the way we look at the mental health, we look at mental health in relation to risk as a risk factor of violence. So most of our work is really trying to uh, prevent violence, but also trying to create a safe uh, environment within the family, so then people would really, you know, be able to function and integrate in the community uh, easily. So that's really uh, basically what we have been doing so far, using our culturally integrated family safety response that's focused more on community coordinating uh, process. Uh, next steps, we're trying to engage more partners to work with CIFSER, the Cultural Integrated Family Safety Response. We actually formalize our relationship with many organizations. We have protocol of understandings. Uh, we started now what we call community of practice. We just started maybe for the, five, for the last four months working with the London Coordinating Committee to End Women Abuse, uh, using community of practice strategy. Really what we do, we bring case examples and we ask the, the people who will be part of this conversation, what would be the standard uh, responses to this kind of situation? And then add different layers, like for example, pre-migration trauma, cultural differences, what would be the, the responses? Really engaging in a very difficult conversation to really uh, you know, push everybody to stretch beyond their mandate and come to us a common, common solutions. Uh, so we are also, uh, part of our uh, goal to make the CIFSER, the Cultural Integrated Family Safety Response, as more a mainstream model of responses to family violence in immigrant uh, communities. Uh, thank you very much.